question that relates to much of my experience. That's because since I was eight, nine years old, I was able to observe so many different mediumships relate to the family, friends, and when I was in Brazil. But sometimes I had a question saying, uh, everything is the people depend on the spirits that we call mediumship, or sometimes the person has this ability to see something. Like I, I was able to see people giving some lectures, sometimes give information about the family, or the ones has passed on, people has died by vocally, not much psychography, not so much writing, but most of talking. And sometimes I, I, I like to test, I was every time very skeptical, I still very skeptical sometimes. And then I want to see, see which point is the person, which point is the, the spirit, which mediumship is really good. And then sometimes I, I had one experience, it was amazing. Uh, they ask, say, can you, you can ask a question to the medium, the spirit's gonna ask to you, answer to you, sorry. And then I ask a question, and the spirit answer, uh, answered something that nobody understood, say, well, he asked something, he was talking about another thing. But he was talking about what I was thinking about. I, I, I had a question in my mind, I, I asked another question completely different, and he answered the question that was in my mind. And that's only I understood the answer for the question, I said, okay, this is really a good proof that for me that's not the person, but the mediumship. But also I, I like to talk to the medium sometimes, I say, look, everything that you sense, is the spirit showing to you, or you have sometimes this ability to show, to see something? And the person used to say, no, no, I have the, sometimes the ability. I can look to the people, and I can say that person has some kind of a disease. The spirit doesn't show me exactly what it is. I can sense, I can even tell that, look, you should look at a physician, a medical doctor, to see this kind of a disease. You might start the disease in your body. And then I, I start to think about, well, then we have two kind of uh, activity over here. We have the mediumship, and also we have what we could call the psychic power, the power that people bring to them. But one thing that was interesting about this is that when you talk about mediumship and psychic power, <laughs> both activities is based on the existence of mind. And that's interesting because there was some time on the, on the psychology that they didn't accept the existence of mind. The brain working, but no mind. But today, science is every, most of the people agree with the idea. Yes, mind is something that's real. There's two schools of ideas when you talk about mind. One, they say mind is a product of the brain. It means all the neurological, the chemical be reactions in the brain produce the mind. And there's another group saying, no, mind can also exist beyond the brain. Maybe we can put the mind on a machine, on the, on the device that can express the mind. We see this in the science fiction movies, right? People trying to, to, to research how I can bring the mind to the conscious for a machine, then I keep them continually. But on the spiritism, we learn that mind continue after life, it means mind is not a product of the brain. Mind is something that we don't know yet, we cannot explain, but we think that, okay, it exists after life. And then come the idea, what is mediumship? What you could say was a mediumship? A, a very specific com definition, you could say, mediumship is a communication of a soul or a spirit. I want to differentiate here because a spirit, when you say discarnate, so it's like the, the situation that we are here. We live in the biological body. We, have, we are the soul living the body. We are not the body have a soul. It's not correct to say, oh, my soul was doing this. No, I was doing this. I live on the body. When I disconnect, when this body dies, I can survive as a spirit. And then a communication. Why a communication of a soul? Means can I communicate with somebody else? Can I transfer my information for somebody else and this somebody else tell another people? Yes, it's possible. It's more difficult. Why? Because you need training to do this. But it's possible. And the spirit can communicate using the body of a media, the medium. That's a very specific definition for mediumship. Another thing is based on the survival of individuality or the soul after the body dies. After the biological body, death, we have the survival of the conscience, we have the survival of the individuality. Another thing very interesting here, the spirits told Allan Kardec that the spirit has an individual mind. Means, 
When you see in the science fiction, people say the parallel universe, they can, you can meet another one of you, it's not going to be your, yourself. Like we have like the twins, right? The twins are two, two different individuals, they're almost the same body, but a different, and there's the one they have very, very hair, hair that you can see people that are born with this, like almost the same body with the two heads or two parts of the bodies. And you see a two different individualities, a two different minds. Then every time that we're going to, to understand about spiritism, about the spiritual life, we have to keep in mind, when we disconnect, we keep our individuality, we keep our mind, we keep our experience. You change your personality. Like you, if you look at yourself 20 years ago, you're going to say, I'm not like that anymore. My personality changed. That's different, okay? We need to understand the personalities that we behave with, that characteristics you have along the life. Your personality is going to change. That's why they call they have a a mental disease, if you could say they have, people have multiple personalities because they, can, they cannot control the one personality, they express different personalities like some in the past, something that happened that come in the present and have different personalities. What is another kind of a mediumship we could say? Oh, mediumship also, every time that a spirit connects with another one is a mediumship. That's why the spirits told Kardec, well, if everybody has a body, and everybody has a mind. If we connect to each other, anyone can be a medium. Anyone can be a medium. Can be aware or not aware of the situation, right? I could be aware and see and sense that some spirits can transfer information for me to talk about somebody else, or could not be aware, and I'm gonna be connected with another mind and start to do example. Someone sit down and start to do a poem. Someone sit down and start to write the music. Someone start to do some research, some, some writing. They could be connected with another mind, connected with another spirit, but not aware about this. It's because it was a friend that wants to help. And people used to say, oh, then the people that used to listen voices, if they are medium, yes, right, they, if they have this. But the point is, is oh, there is a problem to hear a voice. No, everybody hears a voice. The problem is, what is the voice telling you and what are you doing with this voice? Is the voice telling you, be happy, try to be better, try to be fraternal, try to be more peaceful, and you try to be better, that's good, right? But the voice tells you something that's not good, then that's, that's become a disease, right? Everybody used to say that mediumship used to be some kind of a problem in the personality. They have a characteristic on, on psychiatric. But today they have a special chapter for this and they're not considered disease anymore. Why? Because people said, look, we did a research with the guy like in Brazil, they have people that have mediumship for more than 30 years. More than 30 years they relate to some activity of mediumship. And they are going to research his life or her life, a normal person. They have no problem. They work, they have a job, they have a profession, they have a normal re relationship with people. And they say, this is cannot be a disease, right? Because how come? If it was a disease, people was not normal. Must be some kind of a behavior, some kind of a ability that we need to investigate. And another thing then that came the idea of psychic powers. What is it, the idea of the psychic powers? They said it was an extrasensory perception by the mind. Okay, why we talk about the mind? Because we have so many senses, right? We have the, the, the basic of the five senses, but we have more than that. Because when, when you say, how you sense temperature in your body? You, you don't know it specifically, but you sense. Sometimes you sense the temperature, in the, the best one is the, the, the edge of your fingers. But, the best, but also you can sense temperature in your head. I said, geez, I'm, I'm feeling this heat around my air, but all oh, my ears look like heating. Like, and that you say, but I don't, I don't know about this. Because the body has really more than five sensors. We have the five general sensors, but the, the, the connections inside the body is more than that. But why they say perception by the mind? Because you could say, all right, if I close my eyes, can I see an image? Yes. Right? Who, who, who do not dream over here? When you sleep, you close your eyes. Most of the people close their eyes. I don't know if somebody sleeps with the eye opens. And do you see image when you're sleeping? 
Yes, and you have this in your memory. Oh, that night I have a dream. But can you describe your dream? Yes. I can tell the image, I can tell the place I was there. I can even tell the smell that I have in my memory. Well, but you, your eyes was sleeping, you, your eyes closed, you not, have nothing nearby that. Then what is this? I mean, the brain can keep this image. And then they say, okay, that's on your mind. Then ask why extrasensory perception by the mind? Because if you sleep, you can see image. Then you awake, if you close your eyes, could you see some image? Yes, and those people can see that. They go, okay, then it's an extrasensory perception. But why they gave these names? Because they want to do some kind of research. People say, okay, let's, let's investigate to know if this is good or not. But then come the question is this. Did mediumship start with Alain Kardec? This was Alain Kardec, the first one, talk about mediumship? No. He was the one who organized the ideas, organized all the knowledge and created this thing. Let's go create the spiritism. That's gonna be like a philosophy, like science, like moral aspects to give the first step. The idea of Alain Kardec was going to give the first step, was not, okay, I did everything, no. He did, I say, I organized, I give the first step, because in the future, everything's gonna increase, everything's gonna pass. Then I was investigating, I have some information that was amazing. This guy over here, he's a French. This is a, this is a translation for the French so in English, this the first English published published was 1855, but in French was in 1848. You see there on, on the handwriting, 1848 was the when this book was written in was published in France. This is a book they talk about. They says, you see, secrets of life to come. Proof of the existence of the spiritual world. Before the spirits books that was organized in 1857, I already have this book. And this guy here, Cahane, I guess is that's the pronouncing French. I don't know the French pronunciation. But this guy here, he organized this with this without any knowledge about the spiritism, because they didn't have the spiritism on that time. Alain Kardec didn't organize the, the, the spirits book. He was putting out together on that time. Then we'd say mediumship was organized by Alain Kardec. No, he organized the spiritism. Those people here the, the, in this book, they talk about the spiritual world. They was kind of medium. Yes, it's a kind of a medium because even though somnambulism is the, the person is dislocated with the body, but he was receiving information for the spirit. The spirit was passed to him, and he was passed to this guy who was taking notes and organizing and create a book. You see, this was in 1848. This was in France. Here in the United States, we have another book that was 1855. That's for Andrew Jackson David. This was really another great medium. He was able to pass a lot of information without the knowledge about the Spirit's book because they didn't have the Spirit's book on that time, even the book of millions. Means mediumship is not specifically for Spiritism. Spiritism organized the knowledge for people to understand the mediumship. This book is really interesting. He's talking about the spiritual world. He talked about the moral aspects, that relationship of the spirits. And one thing that's very common on this book and the other one, I showed before, the spirits used to say that if you want to improve yourself, you need to do good things. That's what's common between them. All the good spirits say you need to improve yourself to improve your behavior and do good things. Another book that I saw also, these books are available on the internet, it's, a, it's all digital format. This one is for the American medical doctor here in the United States. This one, it was in, 1855 too, and he wrote about the spirit manifestation. He was doing some research by the own, and he saw so many different types of mediumship, and he was also investigate which one was really mediumship, which ones of people faking the ideas. And that's become a problem because when people used to want to criticize the spiritism idea, they says, oh, this is fake mediumship. But the Spiritism was not about mediumship. I mean, spiritism was a doctrine, it was about, it's about ideas, it's about a philosophy. Mediumship was the tools that the Spirit used to pass the information. 
But if you don't like it, you're going to say, oh, the mediumship is something that's different. And then people used to say in the past, oh, if it's mediumship, it's spiritism. Today, no, people is more aware about the things they say. Mediumship is the ability of the human body, the humankind. Mankind can be a medium or not. Then spiritism is only a philosophy that help you to understand this process. Excuse me. Do you know if any of these three books, you just said this one is in the internet, but what do you mean? Are they in Amazon or something? No, no, they're digital. You go in Google, put the name of these guys, put the name of this, these books. Three of them? Yeah, you can have this in digital format on Google Books and on other archives. Because okay. of the more than 100 years, a public domain. Okay. It's like if you want to use, the, you want to see the Spirit's book digitally, you can find in English, in French, in Portuguese. I only wanted to see that, see, even before the Spirit's book, people was already published information about the spirituality. Now, the spirituality was not something specific for the spirit. It was not Allan Kardec that hold everything. People used to say, oh, Allan Kardec was the one who creates the mediumship. No, he was organizing information by the mediums. And that's the, the idea was the philosophy of the spirits. Because Allan Kardec would ask to the spirit, say, look, now that you guys manifestation, we understand that. What's the idea? Why do you want to communicate? What do you want to communicate? That's why he organized the Spirit's book. It was because he has a lot of information that say, this information is used for mankind. It was not only to say, oh, mediumship is some people, they receive information, that's it, finish. No, he wants to know what kind of information. That's information he's doing. And Allan Kardec tried to organize on his book, on the, on the Spirit's book, and also the medium books, the types of mediumship in, in terms of general aspect, not a specific aspect. And then people are going to understand that what was the first type of mediumship that caught attention for the public? It's the one that's most amazing, right? That's the one that's most completely different. That's one they call the physical type of mediumship. This type of mediumship is claimed to involve perceptible manifestation, such as loud raps or noise. The spirits used to use knock, make noise, on, and people say, who is doing this noise? They used to call this later on poltergeist, in German name. It's a poltergeist because the spirits can't make noise and do movie stuff and do completely different stuff. If you're going to see only someone, hey, this guy is passing a message. Oh, forget it. <laughs> oh, they're moving the table? I want to see. I want to see this table moving. Oh, the guys, the, the, the pen, you put it like a device, like a triangle shape, put a pen on the top, leave on the top of the table, on the top of the paper, and that starts to move by itself. It's not people even touch. It starts to move by itself. Ah, oh, that was amazing. These people want to see this. And then Kardec was one day when people told him, say, you need to see those kind of a table moving, the chair moving. He said, oh, you must be kidding with me because maybe tables cannot move, chairs cannot move unless someone is holding that and move the chairs. And when he saw by the first time, he went to say, okay, if it's moving, must be intelligence behind all this. And that's where going the investigation. After he figure out, say, okay, is the spirits of the mankind, is this kind can do that? All right, then let's go do something beyond this. I want to know why you're doing this. And then the spirit says, okay, you can do more than that. You can materialize objects. That was another amazing. Can you imagine you, your group of people sit down around the table and they can materialize like a flower, bring a flower from the garden, outside the house and put on the top of the table. This is really amazing. Even today, you cannot explain this. How you can explain an object can pass by the wall? You have the materialize and the energy to do this is very, very big. You cannot do this with like a five, six watts. It's a lot of energy. When the spirits used to do this, this was amazing. People was amazed with this. Another thing that you can see even pictures from this. They, they used to materialize like a hand, and then people use like a paraffin, it's a, it's a wax, it's a liquid wax, and they, the spirit put the hand inside and take it out and stay like the shape of the hand. Can you, you can even see the fingerprints for the hands. And that's what's really amazing. Say, Dude, everybody wants to see this. Everybody wants to see the phenomenon. Who doesn't want to see the phenomenon today? Hey guys, we're going to do this. You're going to transfer the flower for your house 
in the garden your house is going to put it here. You're going to transfer the pen that in the top of your table and going to make show up here. Oh, everybody's going to line up here to do this. But the question is this, what for? Why you want to do this? Why you want to only show this manifestation? That's the, the Spirit told Kardec, look, in the future, we're not going to do this anymore. Because now that we everybody have the attention, everybody knows what's going on, we want to pass information, we want to change this. And that's when they start to call intelligent manifestations. They, they need more information. They need the, the medium needs to be more organized. Because it looks look like if you sit down on the table, a group of six, ten people, they only need to, to pass the energy for the spirits to go there, use their energy, that material, to materialize a flower, to transport something. They used to say, OK, I don't need to do anything. Why? What I need to do? I sit down there, the spirits do the job. But then the spirits told Alan Kardec, no, we need to change ourselves. We need to improve our behavior on Earth. Can we imagine if that's the planet going to keep making war and war and war for long? How long? How long humanity is going to be doing war? They have no sense of fraternity. For how long humanity is going to be involved with crimes? This has to stop. This has to change. Mankind has to change his behavior to go to be a fraternal civilization. That's any people from another planet, if they can come over here, they can say, Oops, I don't step there because these people are still far beyond the fraternity. If they don't take care of themselves, they're going to take care of somebody, another different realm. They don't want to do this. But the spirit says, you need to do a different works. The missions for the, the, for the future is going to be related to intelligent manifestation. One of them they call conscious psychophony. What is the psychophony? Is this people communicate? In Brazil, there is one that's very notable. They call Divaldo. Divaldo Franco is one of this. He's, why he's conscious? Because he's conscious about what's going on, and we receive the information and pass the information. But here we have two different aspects here. Sometimes this medium, like Divaldo, he's aware of the communication. But also we have people that's not aware of the communication. You know those people, they start to yell, scream if the other ones, like crazy because he doesn't have patience. Like remember last week, Yonada was talking about we need to develop the patience because when you're impatient, you might scream at somebody else. You often, maybe you don't know, you're not sure that on that moment your mind is connected with another mind and here you, you become a medium of a disharmony, a medium of a bad habits, unconscious, because you're conscious of the moment, but you're not aware, because you don't know about yourself. You never try to investigate about your psychic powers, your mediumship. And suddenly, you become this kind of a medium that you start to pass hope, you start to pass fraternity, you pass disharmony, you pass um, impatience. Then we need to understand this. The other aspect that I want to see it, they call sonambulistic psychophonic. Sonambulistic is because the medium doesn't, doesn't remember very much. If you have a, a spirit of a higher elevation, high level of knowledge, high level of moral standard, he can communicate with, by a medium, and the medium might not remember, is not aware about the whole communication. Only if somebody tell them or, or time, they can start to remember something. That's very more difficult to see this because the medium needs to be very good in terms of moral standards to do this. Another one that I was very interested in is called out-of-body psychophonic. That was, a, I saw this on the book, on Louis' books. He said, the book that we studied in the realms of mediumship, there was one situation that they had a friend, they have a disconnect, the friend has died like two months ago. But he could, he could not go to the group, to the medium, group to communicate. He's still in the, in the process of adaptation of the spiritual world. Then one of the mediums had the ability to get out on doing the, they call this out of the body experience, out of the body process. And then he went out of his body on this group and go to contact this friend that was like on the spiritual world, on the spiritual hospital in the city. And then he passed the information for the medium and the medium communicate about for the group. That is very, very difficult to do this because the medium needs to be very conscious about that. Can you imagine you go over here on the group and say, look, I'm going to communicate with your mother that passed away 
two, three months ago, but she cannot come to the group. She's not prepared to give a communication. Then this go over there, talk to her, and then she passes the information, and this media can pass the information for the family, for the group. This is really more difficult because people need to be more trained about that. Another thing that's very interesting that they call medianistic art. There are some people they can sit down and they don't play piano. They don't play any music at all. But they have this the ability maybe for another experience, another lifetime, but they connect with some musician spirit of a musician and they play music and then it's not, it's not so common to do this. I have seen people paint. I don't know if someone you have seen these mediums that can paint. They, by themselves, they said, I can do nothing. Only when the spirit comes to me, I receive that process. He doesn't he know how to explain to do this. Because say, I, I, I cannot paint. I cannot do anything. And then when the spirit comes to him, like in five to ten minutes, he does a very good painting. Like von Hebron, all the names. I don't know, I'm not expert on this. But I have seen this. I have seen people paint stuff, say, you're amazing me. And then the guy said, I, I can do, I cannot do by myself. And I have seen even people playing music. Some of them say, listen, I, I don't know how I do this. I, I wish I could do this every time, but I don't know how to do it. I receive like this, this symphony, I sit down on the piano and start to play the music. It's, it's, it's amazing. But the most that everybody knows, most people they used to see, is they call psychography. What is psychography? It's the medium that right. And, and Alain Kardec, with the Spirit's books, he gave more attention for this one, psychography. And then you're going to ask, say, why Alain Kardec was more connected with psychography? You need to remember, on the time of 1850, what is the best way to pass information for the other ones? Writing, book. We don't have video, we don't have cameras, we don't have audio recorders. The only thing we could do was writing, put in the magazine, put in the book, and we print and people can read. And then also, then of course, he was going to give, say, the best thing to do, let's go give more information about psychography. Even Chico Xavier, when he was writing, he was writing like in the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s. We didn't have cameras. We don't have DVDs we have today we can record here and keep for 10, 20 years. You don't have to do this. The only process, the best process to do was Writing, writing. And people ask also, say, why they used to write with pencil? There is some specific magnetism of the pencil. Guys, remember, in 1850, 1840s, we don't have pens where we have pen today. The pen was like you put in the, the, on the ink, then you write a little bit, put a little bit, write a little bit. But the pencil, the pencil was the best. If you keep 10 pencils over there, they're going to keep writing. Take another pencil, going to keep writing. These spirits cannot be like, OK, guys, I'm going to give you five minutes to fill it up the the container, put it the ink, put it the pencil. Of course, then the people have to see, oh, maybe because the pencil has some kind of magnetism. No, it's because it was the best way for the spirits to use. You're going to take, what, two days to write a page because you don't have pens. Today, we don't even need to say, say only spirits can write by pencil today. Of course not. If, if the person is a medium for writing and he's connected with, like, mind to mind, he's not, he's not the mechanic one. That's the, the, like, Chico Xavier was like a mechanic because they said the spirit was writing. He didn't know exactly what was writing. He didn't have aware about this, the message. But if you can connect mentally with your spirits, you can sit down in front of the computer and write a whole book. Because the, the process is not the arms. The process is the mind. That's what they call intelligent process. It's mind-to-mind -mind connection. That's what everybody can do this today. Can sit down and write a book, write a newspaper, write some column for newspapers, for a magazine. And suddenly, you're going to write good things. But if, you stay, if your mind is not in harmony, you're going to be right bad about people. That's something. You know, when you write, type in the phone, you need to think about what I'm typing here, right? Because if you type on the moment that you're very upset with something, your words might not be nice. And remember, your words are going to be there for some time. When you look again, say, Jesus, did I write this? Oh my God, let me rewrite again and tell my forgiveness for people. Because we need to think about this. 
Because when you write on the paper, when the psychography was more easy, right? Because you have time to organize the paper, you read the message, oop, that's message. But if you become like a medium without know, without being aware of this, and you're in the phone and the computer write some stuff for someone or about someone, you need to think about twice before you click send. Because say, let me read here. It's not, I'm not worried about the orthography if I misspell it, not that. I want to know about the information, what I'm writing here. Because suddenly, I have seen people, I used to see when I was young, when I was 12, when I was eight years old, I used to see people talk on the street alone. People say, oh, this guy has some mental problems. Today, it's very difficult because you don't know if people talk on the phone. They had this on the ears, and they talk to somebody else on the phone like the, the person is in front of them. They, just, they, they change arms, they yell, they move, they, they kick them something nearby and say, geez, how come these people do this? They talk on the phone and like they talk with the person exactly in front of them. And then you can imagine, when you're in this state of mind, you're not in the state of mind that you're very calm, you're very gentle, you must be like very, very disarmed in your mind. Then it's very dangerous because you might become associated with some mind that's going to make you more and more like bad situation for yourself. Then we need to think about this. When I was reading about this idea about psychic powers that say, People must be start to do some research. I found this book here. That's the book is from 19. This is this is Roman algorithm here. is is 19. 11, 1911, around this, was almost more than a, se a century ago. This guy here wrote a book called Spiritism in Psychology, Theodore Flournoy. And, and the interesting on this book here, he said, "Look, I'm not denying the the phenomenon." I want to say that this phenomena can be explained by psychology. On 1911, psychology was a beginning science. And then he said, I'm not denying the people, I'm not denying the ideas, but I say spiritism doesn't need to be existence. And because he said everything was a psychology could explain on that time. This was 1911. Today, we know that psychology has advanced, have more knowledge, they have a different perception. And then came, in 1930s, they, they used to call part of psychology. They create a name because I want to differentiate for this type of mediumship. Mediumship is, has a, a face of something fake, is something that might be not real, that might not be good. And then we create the term parapsychology. That's do some research, let's go do research on the university. This was one of the first in the United States, was doing 1930s by J.B. Ryan in the Duke University. And that's, they decide to say, let's go then clarify this field of extrasensorial perception. They don't call this mediumship anymore. Only let's go call psych powers, right? That's the psychic ability of somebody else. Why? Because they want to differentiate of the idea of the religion and, and moral aspect. Because one of the main points when you do this kind of research People, they don't want to talk about philosophy. They want to do the research. Say, what is the philosophy behind this, all this spiritism? Say, no, we don't want this. We don't need this. And you want to do a research to know if it's possible or not possible. And that's it, finish. And then they, they decide to create so many different names. Clairvoyance, the ability of things people can see things in the future can see things that's happening. And this means people have this ability, they don't need the speech to do this. There's some kind of ability they have in their mind. But we don't know, cannot explain this, but they have. They call clear audience, people that can hear spirits. You know, people hear spirits. Some of them, they, they classify like schizophrenic people because they can hear voice because the voice tell them to do something that's not good. But when you see good stuff, they say, oh, no, this guy, we keep them outside of the, the, the research. Dream telepathy, that's another thing that was, they create this term, dream telepathy. People, they can communicate by dreams. I have seen people sometimes so say, oh, I remember, I dream with you, I remember you talking to you, do you remember? Say, oh yeah, I remember you talking about, we don't know what exactly you're talking about. But they said, okay, this is kind of ability that people can do it. The spirits doesn't need to be on the middle of this situation. That's what they, they create in parapsychology. 
psychometry, the ability to obtain information about a person, object, by touch. People get like a, a cloth for somebody else, and they can describe some personality of that people who own that clothes. Because that people, is, especially if they like too much, like a watch. Suppose someone has the watch since for the grandfather. This was passed for the grandfather. He keep it in his house. The people that have this ability can get this watch and start to describe anything about related the person or like the family. And they call this psycho psychometry, yes. Uh, in that case of psychometry, if someone gave you a piece of cloth uh, that was used by another person, is it, can it be dangerous to grab some energy from that other person? The, our friend is asking if like if when people doing this kind of a process, psychometry, he can acquire like the energy that's unbalanced for somebody else. They, we need to understand that the, he, this process, they want to acquire information. Only the sensations, like the feelings of people is related to that object. But all depend on the state of mind of the, the person doing this. Because Andrea Luis even says, this kind of a process, when you use to do this, like to help somebody on the, on the health problem, your intentions are very good because you, you're going to do it in the health. You, you focus on the, on the health of the people. But when you're going to do this, like people used to do this to help like the police. Somebody lost this and they want to know who committed the crime. We found this on the scene. And he said, this is very dangerous because you can associate your mind with criminals' minds. And they can pass wrong information to you. Because it's not because he committed a crime, he's not intelligent. He might be more powerful than the medium and can change his idea. That's the danger, to change the information, pass wrong information, and the person become like, oh, this person, see, they only give wrong information. The intention is more important than information, the intention of the medium. He was there only to acquire the information to help, that's more useful. But what about when there is absolutely no intention behind it? For example, I buy something, I buy a watch that they sell here, here at the center. Yeah, yes. They sell a bunch of... Uh, uh, objects. objects, yes. Yeah, used stuff, right? Used objects. What are the chances that I buy one of those used watches? For example, uh, I don't know who used to wear that thing for how long and whatever. What are the chances that... that watch is carrying a bit of the energy of the person. Well, yeah, yeah. Our friend is asking, like, suppose you buy an object that the object was very, very attached to somebody else. I, there is an example in the book called The Realm of the Mediumship. They went to a, to a house. There was a, a watch, a, a, this big watch, old ones that we can collect on the, on the walls. And there was a, a woman connected with this watch. She had received this a gift from the, the fiancé that never come back from Europe. She was living in Brazil. He went to Europe and never come back to marry her. And she was so attached to this, to this watch, the feelings, the sensation. Then he told, if someone buy this watch and take it home, they will take the sensation of this person together. Then you, you, you don't know. The, the only thing you can, might do it is keep yourself in harmony, you know? Because if you keep yourself in the good intentions, if you have good intentions with the, the stuff you bought it, those kind of a sensation is not going to disturb you. My, my, you might sense, but it's not going to disturb you. You might sense, yes, yeah, that's possible to sense somebody. It's possible you possible to sense this. Is a way to neutralize that energy to make that? Yes, that's the one I want to talk about here, this, this idea. We, Emmanuel, in the book, he said, Emmanuel, he said, we could make the intuition development. He said here, look, each individual should increase the field of his or her spiritual capacity. You see, you can increase that. You can protect yourself. You like to create a, a field of harmony around yourself. Those kind of feelings, those kind of sentiments cannot disturb you. You can sense, but do not bring you this harmony. You can keep your harmony. He said, you can keep this with perseverance and effort, which will certainly lead the acknowledge of the sublime truth about the invisible world, without the assistance of any intermediary device of being. Means if you exercise this, let, let me, I guess, let me pass, I guess I pass too fast here, I guess, I, okay, I pass this, this one here. How we can do this? How can you create this field around ourselves? He said, mankind need the intuition faculties. It is important that we try to improve our spiritual energies through mental exercise. 
You see, we can keep this energy around ourselves if you do exercise for our mind to do this. Keep the mind vibrating in harmony with generous intentions. You see, that's, that's the most important, your intention. What was your intention when you bought that object? If you, if you have a good intentions, that is going to create like a field around yourself that's the, any kind of a feelings not going to bring disharmony for yourself. This is like a natural process. More and more harmony you bring to yourself, more and more protection you create for yourself. And another thing, it's not a question to create protection. It's an it's opportunity that you also you can ex express, you can irradiate this to another people. You can pass this to another people. Like if you pass to the object, you're gonna, I want to give this gift for my friend. Like you can, you can like create a field around this object, a good one. When you say I want these people, when they, when they be like on, on, the, on the time they need it, they come to look this object, they feel good. You can, you can like do this. People used to say like, it's like, uh, it, it's not magic, but it, people used to say, oh, some plants can the ability to, to sense us, ourselves. Oh, Yes, because that's our intention. You can imagine, if you give flowers for somebody with the intention, say, I want these flowers here, give peace, fraternity for the people. It will give. People know my sense from the beginning, but later on they say, oh my, the flowers you gave to me, I used to see, the moment we used to have a flower in the house, the flower was take on like for seven, eight days. It was amazing because the, the, the environment of the house was really good. That's the, the, the we can do it. We can create this field around ourselves. We can do this by mental exercise. That's one thing we need can do it. And that's, to finish here, I want to remind what Matthew's chapter six on the item 16, he says, Jesus said to him, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your fathers in heaven. That's why I say your light is your energy. Like you created this field around yourself. When you give something to somebody, do like this, do like a prayer and say, look, I want this object here to give peace, fraternity. I want, it's not people to remember me, but to, to have a, a state of a good feeling, a good well-being. How many times you did this? I almost not do that. I need to learn how to do this. I need to learn and say, look, I want to, even a pencil that you give to somebody else to use it, say, look, I want to, when people hold this, feel peace, feel fraternity, feel something good. Because if you don't know the things you give to, is given to you, but you know you can give to somebody else. You know, you can pass this kind of a light, this kind of energy. You can, you can like, magnetize, if you could say, the objects, and people can sense this when they hold that. Oh my God, this is so good. I feel, I remember my friend, I remember something good. We can do this. And that's, I hope you learn for this. We have our psychic powers, but we need to do this like with the good intentions, with harmony. And then you're going to see the difference. You might try to do experiment for Christmas, okay? You have more three months for months to train in this. I want to give this gift for somebody else, but I'm going to even do a prayer before to sense for people when they get this gift for me, like that cloth. When they put the cloth, they're going to feel peaceful. They're going to feel good, they're going to feel more calm, that's going to be, they, we don't need to know if they like or don't like it, but you're going to feel good. Try to do this, I'm going to try to think about this for Christmas, right? We use, you like to go give Christmas, we like to receive, you but... You don't even need to wait for Christmas, there's something that I heard like 20 years ago from Jeval Trump, him explaining that mothers could heal a child with food, of their own oh, yes. just with the vibration, you know, and I have done that myself, with my daughter and my nephew. Our friends it works is, immediately. Yeah. It's amazing. Our friend is talking something that's even into interesting. Even the food that we eat every day, like how many people we, we stop to eat, like let me give it 30, 30 seconds, one minute to relax, then I'm going to eat. Some people eat today, even know, oh, did I eat today? I, I, I don't know, did I eat today? Because they are not peaceful inside themselves, right? How they expect to have this? They used to say, what is important is not what you eat, but what you assimilate. What are you assimilating with that moment? Now you feel peaceful, okay, now I can eat. Now I feel good. Now you, I feel not only nourish my body, but I nourish my mind, I nourish my feelings. That's a good point that we learn how to do this in the future.
I would say thank you for everybody for the opportunity to come over here. We hope that in the future we can give like a workshop one day about those exercises for the mind. Thank you. Bye.